we're back. Um, had a little bit of a delay there in the build. Um, took about a week and a half or so off of uh, building the airplane, turned the whole garage here into a cabinet painting workshop. Um, so went through and basically painted all the cabinets in our um, two bathrooms and the kitchen. Um, to hopefully add a little bit of value to the house. Our, uh, our goal is, uh, is to have this house here rented out uh, by the end of the year and then be moving on to our next home. Um, so yeah, wanted to, to modernize it, brought it from 1997 up to 2021. Um, so yeah, I had the whole garage here, basically all my plane building stuff, or at least these tables here, became uh, makeshift cabinet painting uh, stations. So super happy to have everything back to normal, back to airplane building. So we'll get to it. Uh, we'll probably jump ahead um, and do a little bit of a time lapse here. I'll be basically getting everything prepped here uh, for the horizontal stabilizer. So I'll chime in every once in a while if there's anything worth adding, uh, any value add stuff. Other than that, you'll see me moving very, very quickly. So we'll jump to it. Alrighty, that wasn't too bad. That moved uh, pretty quickly there. This is all ready to move forward and go ahead and get riveted. So it's this uh, long spar here for the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, but I have these hinge brackets already placed on here. Everything's ready to go. Already uh, final size match drilled and everything. So we'll get ahead and start riveting things. Don't ever get motion sensor lights. Don't do it. Now we didn't get these, they came with the house and I've been so tempted to change it. Um, but it's just so convenient being able to have them to be able to just walk out in the garage and they turn on for you. But when they turn off, they turn off at very inconvenient times when it doesn't sense it. So the spar here is done. Um, super straightforward, simple to do. Um, yeah, it was really just putting these hinge brackets on. I did primer between the two, or at least on the mating surfaces. I didn't primer the powder coated part, but primer the, um, the mating surface there, as well as primer the backside of the doubler, and then the surface there on the spar itself. But yeah, super straightforward. Um, and easy to follow along. This next portion here looks pretty fun. Um, it'll be um, making an attachment. Um, looks like it's gonna be page 8-3, step number one, uh, which is, I guess, putting together this flange bearing. So this flange bearing here, looks like it sits between these two pieces. Um, so it's gonna sit like such. Um, but it's going to involve some uh, some drilling here and then riveting this together um, into one piece. So we'll get to it. That's pretty neat. All right, so I've got this fully attached here and torqued down. I did go ahead and use some thread marker. Um, just so that way in the future, if it ever does change, if it does loosen itself or anything changes here, um, it'll develop a nice little crack and make it very apparent there. So it'll be super easy to inspect to make sure that it's always good going forward. Uh, but next up, which should be very interesting, um, is gonna be a part that I'm gonna have to make out of some angle um, angle material here. So I'm not sure, I'm see if I can get this on camera. Um, but you'll see what I'm gonna do is I'll be taking this stock piece of uh, aluminum angle here uh, and making two parts, one for the left side, one for the right side. Um, and it's not just going to be a straight cut. You'll see the dotted lines there um, indicating that the material on the back side has a, a different profile. So you'll see um, from the back portion, it's going to have that inch and a half inch uh, width there. But then on the front side, it's going to be one and 12, 30 seconds. So um, that'll be kind of fun to do. I think I'll cut this down on the bandsaw, I think. Yeah, I'll cut this down on the bandsaw. Uh, that'll be easiest to control it, and then I think I'll bring it to its final profile on the Scotch Bright wheel. Uh, so yeah, we'll get to it and see if we can make this. I think I get one shot at this because this, uh, this is the only material I have. So let's see if I can knock this thing out and uh, we'll call it a night from there. So quick learning moment here. Um, I know I probably said previously, but 
These videos are not how-to guides. These are more of just documenting my journey and my experiences throughout the build. Uh, but something that I have experienced just now is uh, when you go to make measurements off of things, it's always smart to make sure that it's perfectly square um, or else you're gonna have a crooked cut. Uh, but I think what's going on here, summed up, is when they're cutting these at the Vans factory or if they buy these from a, a metal supplier or what have you, uh, whatever saw blade they're using, which are likely cutting down an angle, it's deflecting a little bit. Um, it's probably not that big of a deal, uh, but you will notice with the material here, um, you'll likely see a little bit of daylight behind there, uh, behind behind the gap here. Not sure if that's gonna show up or not, but it is definitely not fully uh, fully at a 90, and it did verify just with a, a speed square here, which I know is probably not the most accurate thing, um, but it did, uh, did confirm it. So you'll see, I'll put it the other direction, to where I'm lined up on top, You'll see the bottom sticks out a little bit there, uh, probably only a sixteenth of an inch or so. Um, it probably doesn't really matter too much. I'm not sure how critical this part here is, um, but just keep that in mind. True up your edges before um, before you make measurements from them and uh, and make your own parts. You'll see I did err on the side of caution there with the guide being so far up. Um, the um, Vanson has a tendency to to kind of track and uh, kind of find its own path. So I gave it a little bit of room there, um, but I can easily bring that in um, on the uh, on the Scotch Bright wheel. All right, I'm gonna interrupt this video real quick. Austin from the future is here, and I cut that piece wrong. Um, so what I did was I was so, so focused on on a very specific measurement here, uh, which was the, the width of that piece, which was supposed to be one and 21 32nd of an inch uh, wide. So I was super into that. I got that thing perfect, got it cut. I chased it down on the Scotch Bright wheel, got everything absolutely perfect on this part here, ready to drill, ready to go. Um, and then I looked back at the instructions one more time and I had missed a cut. So prior to making that cut at that one and 21 30 second of an inch, um, I should have cut down the material from one inch wide or from two inches wide uh, to one inch. So you'll see here this material, getting all up here. You'll see this material here is, uh, is still two inches. It should have been cut down to one inch first. Then I should have cut that piece there at that one and 21 30 seconds of an inch. Because now if I go back to it, even though it's absolutely perfect, I mean it is right at one and 21 30 seconds of an inch. If I go back to where that one inch would be, which would be somewhere around there, um, I'm gonna be short. It's gonna be sitting somewhere around one and uh, probably one around one and 19, 30 seconds of an inch. So it's wrong. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and scrap this. I got a piece of um, 6061 angle aluminum on order from Aircraft Spruce. So I'll rebuild this when I get that in. I also bought a little bit, or I bought a foot of it. So I'll have extra too in case I happen to make another mistake in the drilling process. Uh, but other builders out there, Really absorb the information first before cutting. Uh, that whole measure uh, twice, cut once thing, I would say that's a, it's a, a good uh, good thing to stand by with the build. Alrighty, so I've made it up to step number four on uh, page five of the uh, horizontal stabilizer. Um, you'll see I was able to get the uh, these left and right brackets uh, profiled down and really happy with the results here. Um, you'll see I have them uh, ready to go to be match drilled to it. So. I have one Clico in the in the drawing for it. You probably saw that it called for one uh, hole at the top portion, which is used to locate them uh, to the spar here. So I have that Clico here, and then I went ahead and clamped a piece of angle aluminum to the bottom here to keep those two uh, square relative to each other. And then I'll go through and start match drilling uh, with a number 30 drill bit from the back side into these pieces. Um, and then you'll see I do have it held together or held up um, to make it easier with the cradles. It calls for these cradles, I think the next page, the next section where we start skinning it and putting the, the, the skin on it. Um, but I did the other day while I was waiting for that extra angle aluminum to come in, went ahead, jumped ahead and created these little cradles for it, which turns out it makes it really easy um, to do this match drilling section because otherwise it would be, um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be kind of hard to do it without it. So it holds it up nicely. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get to getting this match drilled, probably do a quick little time lapse here and then we'll jump ahead to the next section.
Alrighty, so I did go ahead and end up priming all of the parts here so they're ready for assembly. I'm going to end the video here though. Uh, we'll catch back up on the next video getting this riveted together uh, for this uh, forward facing spar here and uh, move forward from there. But you'll see it all end up getting match drilled together, went through really well. Um, I know I said previously that I wouldn't prime everything, but this one just being that it's going to be located deep inside in the forward portion of that horizontal stabilizer, just wanted to prime it and forget about it. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, catch back uh, on the next video here. And yeah, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Next one will be a little bit more involved with the video. We'll have a couple more action shots for you. Um, but if you made it this far, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. That no notification bell lets you know whenever I upload a video. And yeah, say hi in the comments if you want to say hi. But anyways, thanks for watching. Adios.